Okay. So, recording, everyone. Hello, hello, and welcome to our video about pulling data from an API, all within your R console. But first off, what is an API? Um, <laughs> it's a great question, but for the purposes of this course, or at least this lesson, we can think of APIs as the um, go between or like the messenger between an organization's data warehouse that lives online and users like us that would like to access that data and use it for our own needs. Um, but honestly, you really don't have to know more um, and all of the intricacies or the complexities of how APIs work to be able to actually just use them. Um, you can take me for example. I've been taking advantage of APIs for uh, literally years, but didn't actually know how to describe them or what they really were until I was forced to in making this week's lesson plan. So with that being said, let's explore an API. Um, for this week's lesson, I've got y'all exploring the National Park Services API which is a pretty user-friendly API. Oop, there we go. Um, there isn't really a universal way of designing these API web page portals, so don't get too bogged down by the way it's structured here. But from this page, what we're gonna do is um, go to this stats REST API documentation. Um, not the most intuitive name for what is located in here, but this is um, the documentation surrounding API pulls to download National Park Service park visitation data. Um, and what you'll see, not just here, but across many APIs, is that the way users typically communicate what they want the API to pull is done through the use of URLs. And if the organization is nice, like the National Park Service, um, they'll provide us some pretty good documentation on how to structure those URLs depending on what data we're after. So what's being displayed here in that first row, um, after doing some sleuthing on my own, <laughs> um, is the basic blueprint for a URL that will download total park-wide visitor statistics for a year of choice. Uh, so let's try using that URL in our browser here. And you may notice um, those curly brackets. That is the Park Service's way of trying to um, direct our attention to a location in the URL that needs to be updated by the user. So here I'm gonna choose um, 1992 to follow along with the lesson. Um, but once we call on this data set um, by directing our web browser to that URL is we're rooted to something that looks a little bit like a table. It's got years um, listed there, some park visitor data um, nested within visitation data. We've got the year 1992 there, so we know that's 1992 data. Um, but it's all wrapped within this not so user friendly formatting. Um, this type of formatting is really common in API polls. Um, but sometimes these URLs will output the data as CSVs. Sometimes these URLs will um, immediately download an Excel spreadsheet or something like that. But um, really, uh, this JSON formatting, so this is called JSON, um, is pretty darn common. So now that we've seen the data in our web browser, I'm gonna show y'all the R equivalent of what we just did, plus how to unpack this pesky JSON formatting. Okay, first, let's go ahead and load in all of the necessary packages. Of course, the tidyverse. Uh, the next package we're gonna need is a new one for y'all, which is HTTR. 
and then JSON light. Both of these are um, gonna almost always be used when you um, try to access an API from R. So um, good to keep them in your in your toolbox here. So in R, we can access that packaged data set from our web browser that we just saw using HTTR's get package, all caps. Um, and the only thing that you actually need to feed into that function as an argument is the URL in quotes. So I'm going to go back here to copy and paste that URL into my quotes, remove those curly brackets, and replace them with the year of interest. Um, something to note, this uh, only required that we input um, our own inputs <laughs> um, into one curly bracket zone of this URL, but that's pretty um, unusual actually. A lot of API calls require user inputs um, in multiple places in the URL, just something to keep in mind um, that you should be looking oftentimes for more places that are gonna require that user input. So let's go ahead and call this object packed data. Since this is going to be the equivalent of that um, nested data table in our web browser, which we can see here that it is in fact, you know, not so user friendly yet. It's just a list with kind of nested tables within it. So we need to essentially unpack it. So I'm going to call the next object we're making unpacked data. And the way that we can unpack this data is by using HTTR's content function. Um, this function actually requires a few more arguments. Um, the first one being the data set we want to unpack, which is our packed data. And then it's going to require a couple other arguments um, that are going to require some sleuthing on our end. So uh, looking at that packed data, Let's just open it up in our R console. So I'm just gonna hover over it and press Control Enter. And it's going to provide us this information below here. Um, what this is telling us is what type of data this is. So it's a JSON, it's formatted in that JSON formatting as we talked about. And then it's encoding or it's character set um, is UTF. So basically what that means is that we want to unpack it as text and that it's encoding is in quotes here UTF-8. You can typically understand how to uh, fill out those arguments just looking at the data, as I said. The fact that it's a JSON means it's text, and then this character set UTF also kind of indicates it's text, and then its encoding is UTF-8. So let's go ahead and run that. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm just gonna run it, and you'll notice that though it's unpacked, it's still not super user friendly. It's got this pretty consistent data structure about it, um, kind of similar if you've ever seen a CSV or a tab separated 
um, data table before, so we need to parse it out. And to parse text from this JSON formatting to um, a data table, we're going to use the function, I think it's called from JSON. So we're going to call this the final data. And it comes from JSON light package um, from, yep, there it is, from JSON. And the only thing you need to feed this function for the purposes of this lesson is the unpacked data. And what you will see here is a nicely organized data frame showing here um, for the year 1992 both non-recreation visitor counts and recreational visitor counts. Um, for each month of the year across the entire Park Service system. So congratulations, you have successfully pulled in an online data set using an API.